Hello everybody and welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Thank you for joining me on my update videos where I describe some of the work that I managed to get up to this week. Um, but before we get into the actual work, uh, as usual I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all of my sponsors. Um, basically my time here is is paid for by users just like you who want to get involved and basically fund some development and make sure that Inkscape is taken care of, specifically with the view of listening to the kinds of things that you want. So if you are interested and you think that this project is something that, you know, could do with your help, uh, please do join my Patreon or my LibrePay. And, um, and thank you to everybody who's already there. Okay, let's get into the actual work. Um, I spent a great deal of the start of the week dealing with Windows speed issues. Um, it's split into two halves. So the first half, I was basically trying to compile Inkscape for Win Windows and then run tests on it. And unfortunately, our cross-ink or cross-linking um, Windows building uh, has decayed. And unfortunately, I can no longer build Win Windows builds anymore. Um, so I'm going to have to put together a Windows uh, operating system virtual machine, maybe, to be able to do, do that. Um, it's very unfortunate because I, I would have hoped to have been able to build win Windows builds uh, just using my Linux box because it's a lot, a lot, a, a lot faster. And by a lot, I mean by like ten times faster than a vir vir virtual machine. Um, Rene has also said that he might be be able to help fix the cross cross link too. So fingers crossed. Crossed, yeah. Um, the second half was actually about trying to figure out what the scope of the um, slowdown reports were. Uh, so the, the issue was marked as a blocker, which means that we wouldn't have been able to release Inkscape 1.3 at all until it was fixed. Um, but I was getting conflicting reports. Some Windows users were reporting no slow slowdown at all. Others were saying that Inkscape was, was, was actually faster. Um, I created a social media poll and I actually did some uh, interviews to figure out, okay, are people seeing, you know, slowdowns when they use the alpha? And um, the results are basically inconclusive. Uh, most of the people who responded to the poll obviously don't use Windows or didn't download the alpha. So a big th thank you to the about 30 people who downloaded the alpha gave it a try and told me when, you know, if it was slow, slower for them. Um, it looks as if most people say it's about the same. A smaller proportion say that it's slower and a much, much smaller proportion say that it's faster, which tells me that it's probably slower. And given the nature of the issues that we're seeing, it's probably slower because of upstream GTK related widgeting problems, which is a very common issue that we have with Windows and Mac OS. Uh, we don't really want to make an Inkscape that's slower if we can help it. Um, but for now, we've removed the blocker tag because I don't think it is a blocker. I think most people who reported said that they were actually fine with it. Um, even if it was one or two seconds slower for them, they were basically saying that it wasn't disruptive. Okay. Um, I fixed an issue with the blur filters for non-English locales. If you were trying to add a, a, a blur and your locale used the comma for a decimal, um, the blur filter dialog was broken. Um, I... What did I do? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I added uh, development uh, images to the Windows Builders. Um, removing the 1.0 images that had been there for a while. Um, versioned graphics are not really supposed to be a part of our, our main uh, Git repository. They're supposed to be added after branching, and it looks like somebody added the, the, the 1.0 graphics uh, too soon, and so those graphics just got carried over. I've replaced them with some uh, developer versions, which hopefully make it more distinctive and make it more obvious that you're installing the developer ver version and not the, um, like, 1.3, for example. Um, and it'll also help developers understand that they shouldn't replace these gra graphics with, um, you know, their, their new version graphics in the, ma the mainline branch itself. Um, I added a warning to the shape builder tool. 
that allows you to essentially, if you have nothing selected, um, you would just get an empty canvas. What I've done is I've made it so that it warns you and switches back to the select tool. I also had to add an entirely new way of warning you. Um, typically Inkscape would warn you about things by flashing messages into the status bar at the bottom, but um, asking users about whether they see these messages shows that they just don't. Like very few users actually notice that uh, things are happening in the status bar. So this new sort of animated pop-up that goes over the canvas a little bit, um, it should be um, not intrusive, but it should also be a lot more obvious. Uh, going forwards, I'm going to see if there's other messages in the system that could do with being pushed to the screen in this way. But so far, it's just the shape builder tool fix. Essentially, it's a user experience fix because otherwise you would end up with a blank canvas and you'd be wondering why the shape builder tool doesn't work at all. Um, I do have some ideas for the shape builder tool that I think would be pretty cool. Uh, one is to not get rid of the grid when you're finished. Uh, I think that could be optional, maybe a Boolean button on the toolbar. And the other is to fracture raster images. The idea being is that we would create clones of the raster image that you've fractured and um, uh, apply clipping masks to each of the clones. Um, and in that way, you could basically take one raster image, use the shape builder tool to essentially like very quickly break it up into lots of pieces, even irregularly shaped pieces, um, and then just drag those around and, and, and reuse them in ways that we couldn't possibly imagine. Um, but those are not in for 1.3. Those are just ideas. If you think they're good ideas, let me know in the comments. If you have better ideas, I would also like to hear those. Okay, so that's what I've been getting up to. Let's have a talk about some of the things that have been going on in Inkscape uh, otherwise. Um, great news, there's an election for the Project Leadership C Committee. This is the group of leaders who basically make decisions about money and about the trademark and about other things and they communicate with the Soft Software Freedom Conservancy uh, regarding lots of issues to do with organizing Inkscape. Um, we have two open positions. Uh, the current two candidates that have uh, that are currently standing, you'll know because I have interviewed both of them, but I'm hoping that more candidates will come forwards uh, and we'll have a proper election. Otherwise, uh, the, the two will just be elected without a vote. But it's exciting because we haven't had a vote in a very long time and we haven't filled uh, Bryce's old seats in a very long time. And we'll be filling Chris Rogers' uh, seat that he stepped down from uh, two months ago. So, um, yeah, big thanks to Pano at the Software Free Freedom Conservancy for organizing the, the, the election. If you're an Inkscape member, i.e. you're a contributor to, to the pro project and you have voting rights, or you are some somebody who is watching this who is thinking about standing, you have five days from this video going out um, in order to stand. And then after that, you have two weeks in order to vote, assuming that a vote happens at all. Okay, so that's all of the news I have for you this week. Um, please let me know below your thoughts, no matter what they are. Um, it's great to hear from people who, who were using Inkscape and who are asking questions about lots of things. And um, yeah, I will see you all next week. Thank you very much.